Hey guys, Coach Rach here. This podcast is intended to inspire, educate, and support you on your health and fitness journey. I am not a medical doctor and cannot give any professional medical advice. If you are suffering from any kind of medical condition, whether it's mental or physical, please seek help from a qualified health practitioner. Welcome to the Diet Starts Never podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Nigro, aka Coach Rach. This podcast will teach you how to live your healthiest life in and out of the gym and put yourself first again. Oh, and we get long lasting results here. I've made it my mission to help my clients ditch the diet mentality and heal their relationship with food and themselves. After transforming hundreds of bodies and minds, it's your turn. Are you ready? Welcome back to a new and exciting episode of Diet Starts Never. I think I probably say that every episode is exciting, so thank you guys for putting up with me. We are working together to build you a morning routine that is focused around your health and wellness. I want to help you build something that you love and genuinely want to stick to. Before we jump into this, I want to just offer a friendly reminder that we're here to be healthy. Yes, we want to look amazing too, but if we continue to do things that are going to sacrifice our health and well being just to look good or reach a number on the scale, it's going to make us so much worse in the long run. So, as we go into this episode, and I think I kind of I do my best to remind you of this in every episode, I want you to remember your health, focus on that. Health is wealth. If you reach any health goal, if you get your body healthy from the inside out, you will reach that aesthetic goal. And I'm working really hard as a positive influence in the health and fitness community to break the stigmas, to break the restrictive diet cycles, to break using the words, using words such as dieting to lose weight, because we know diet starts never. Your diet is your lifestyle. I want to stop encouraging people to weigh in and start focusing on non-scale victories. Take with it what you will, but I just want to let you guys know that I am working hard to be that positive influence for you and to help you realize that you are so much more than a number on the scale. So today's episode, let's go. We are creatures of habit. If you want to succeed at anything, you need to be consistent. So if you want to succeed at life, not even a health goal, just to absolutely thrive and kill it in your life, you need a routine that you are actually going to enjoy and want to stick to. Most of the time you can't stick to anything is because you don't give yourself the chance. You don't give yourself enough time to adapt to it or you just hit the ground running and go all in on something that you're not used to, which is so unsustainable because it's kind of like culture shock. Like what the fuck? Your body's like, what the fuck is happening? I don't know what this is. So it's all about perspective. If you say waking up 30 minutes earlier to meditate is is miserable, it's always going to be miserable. You have to genuinely want to do these things. You need to know that if you do them consistently, you'll feel incredible. And that feeling will teach you to learn to love your routine. You need to believe in yourself. You need to believe that you are deserving of feeling good. A lot of people don't even understand what feeling good is until they stay consistent for 30 days and accomplish something that they never thought. And they're like, oh my God, this is what having energy is like. Wow. I'm addicted. I want good sleep every night. I encourage you to look at a morning routine as an opportunity to be the most badass, best version of yourself. Now let's take it a step further. You want to reach a health and fitness goal, maybe a fat loss goal, get your ass into a routine, get your ass into something consistent. That is what your body needs. Your morning routine is how you set the tone for the day. Do you want to start the day rushed and cranky? No, you want to start it energized and positive. I encourage you to look at your morning routine as self-care. And I think a lot of people who say like, I have no time for self-care do not have a good morning routine. And you don't have to do everything I suggest to you, but I think you should give it a try. Some of these steps that I'm going to go over in this episode are pretty strict non-negotiables in my personal routine, and they help remind me to show up as the best version of myself. There are 24 hours in a day. Eight of them, you're working. You sleep for about eight of them. What are you doing with the other eight hours? For example, what are you doing when you drive to work? 
Are you listening to the same music or radio show you listen to every day? Or are you listening to the news? Are you avoiding the podcast you've had saved in your phone for months? Do you need to catch up with a loved one and have been putting off this phone call? Basically what I'm saying is how are you prioritizing your time? Is this the way you want to be live? Is what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis how you see yourself? I think a lot of times when we're working towards any kind of goal, we picture ourselves in that goal. We have an association with it, but there's part of us right now that's not showing up to fulfill that association. So like, I know you think of yourself as somebody who gets shit done, but then when you look at your life on, let's say even like a day by day or like productivity basis, are you really that person? I know me personally, I can be way more productive. I'm going to be resetting my whole routine with you guys along the way, because I think this is so good to even do every couple of months. We need that refresher shit. Even every couple of weeks, you can do this on a week by week basis, month by month. You could do it every spring, fall, summer, whatever it is. We got to do what works for you. I'm giving you an outline to follow. It's up to you to tweak it to you. And if you need help, reach out. You know, that's what I'm here for. We are friends. So from now on, you're prioritizing your health. That's what you're doing. You deserve two hours to yourself in the morning so you don't need to rush out the door and can be prepared for the day. So get out a pen and paper and let's build your routine. Step one, we are working backwards. This first step is very important. We are laying out the groundwork. You need to be very clear about what time you need to be out of the house to make it to work on time. The days of rushing out the door are over. Bad bitches don't rush. What time do you need to be at work or drop your kids off at school? How long does it take you to get there? Does your schedule change every day or maybe you work from home? It doesn't matter. We need to get our body into a consistent routine. So, okay, let's say you need to be at work by nine. It takes 30 minutes to get there, which means you need to be ready to walk out the door by 8.15. Yes, not only are we on time girlies, but we are early girlies. If you need to be out of the house by 8.15, this means you need to wake up, get ready, shower, hair, makeup, get dressed, eat breakfast, make your own coffee because we're done wasting money at Starbucks every day, journal and or meditate and do whatever else you need to do by 8 a.m. I know that sounds a little overwhelming, but we're going to break it down. This is just step one. Slow your roll. Let's say you make, make breakfast before you leave. I want you in the kitchen, dressed and ready to go by 7.30 you need 60 minutes to get, get ready, which means you're starting to get ready by 6.30. And you don't want to wake up too quickly and feel rushed and start your day in that quick, high energy place. So you're going to wake up at 6 a.m. to journal, meditate, or even just wake up slowly. This is just an example, but you guys get the idea of how this episode is going to go, how we're going to break everything down. Now, you're going to pause the episode after I say this. Don't pause it yet. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> and you're going to write down all of your current non-negotiables at the top of the paper, everything you need to do in the morning, maybe even throughout the day. Okay, you need to go to work. That's non-negotiable. You need to brush your teeth. You need to shower in the morning. You need to make breakfast. Write down everything you're currently doing. And I want you to kind of review it. Step into how you feel when you're doing that every morning. Do you feel like it's empowering you? Do you feel miserable while you're doing it? you do feel miserable, can we just tweak your perspective a little bit? The more detail, the better. Like write down, put in contacts. I'm not even kidding. We are literally laying out your life. We need to get very clear on what we have, what we want, how we want to do it so we can make shit happen. Then I want you, when you're done writing all that out, leave five to 10 blank lines because we're going to be adding more. Okay. Pause the episode now and then come back in like two minutes. Okay. Hi, welcome back. We're moving on to step two. Step two, and this is, we're getting into the nitty gritty. This is the fun stuff, the building. You're going to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. Yeah, every day. And if you really want to kill it at life, even on the weekends, but most importantly, Sunday to Thursday or whatever your working days are, this step is really focusing on your sleep. Sleep is your foundation. If you're not rested, you're not functioning well. We do not want brain fog. We do not want to feel shitty. I am I'm mean when I'm when I'm tired. I don't want to be mean. I want to show up feeling good and radiate positive energy. Seven seven to nine hours of sleep every single day. Your body recovers and rests when it sleeps. This is when your hard work in the gym and the kitchen pays off. Without sleep, you will never get any results in any area of your life. Maybe you're thinking, nah, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Okay, that's fine. But you're gonna die way sooner than me because I am rested. If you don't get consistent sleep, 
you're literally going to hurt yourself. You're going to take years off of your life. Chronic exhaustion can lead to so many illnesses and diseases, metabolic disorders such as obesity, type 2 diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease. It can also lead to chronic stress, which leads to its own wide array of illnesses and disease. So lack of sleep and high stress will inhibit any fat loss or muscle gain, and it will make you feel like shit. I'm not on this earth to feel like shit. So let's get this internal clock set. Your internal clock is your circadian rhythm, which is basically something that runs on a 24-hour cycle based off of light and darkness. Eventually, you're not even going to need an alarm. Now, you're going to write down how many hours of sleep you want. You want eight hours. If you're a woman, eight to nine, man, seven to eight. I know we didn't complete your morning routine yet, but you have a better idea of what time you need to go to bed. We'll tie it all in in the end. I just want you to write down right now eight hours of sleep. That's it. Pause, write it down. Okay, welcome back. Step three, get your ass out of bed. Yeah, don't hit snooze. Snoozes are false starts to the day. An extra nine minutes of sleep is not going to make you feel more rested. You can't wake up because you allow yourself to snooze and your body is used to falling back asleep. That's the routine it's in right now. Alarm goes off hit snooze, sleep for nine more minutes, wake up, maybe hit snooze again. And so then really you're sleeping in 20 minutes later. Why are you setting an alarm for 6 a.m. and you're not getting out of bed until 6.30? If you need to be up at 6.30, set your alarm for 6.30 and get out of bed. If you need to be up at 6, set it for 6 and get out of bed. But then I suggest waking up before them or maybe even asking your partner for support in that area or maybe even getting them into your morning routine with you. Give yourself a few minutes in bed but I suggest getting out of bed right away. Not rush, you don't need to like, alarm goes off, pop up, open your eyes, stretch, visualize for a few minutes, set some intentions for the day and sit up. This is when you'll go into your feel good activities. You don't really have anything to write down right now. We'll get your wake up time in a little bit and work our way back into this. Step four, no more cell phone in the morning. Yeah, that's right. We're putting your phone away. When you pick up your phone, you're instantly connected into everybody else's world. Scrolling through the news or social media and tapping into other people's lives. How is that going to help you in your life? Engaging with this type of content before fully awake or out of bed is allowing it into your subconscious mind. So if you read something negative, you're now starting your day with negative thoughts. I don't know about you guys, but like if I wake up and see like missing dog, that's like the least, actually that's probably the worst example I could think of. That is going to set me off. That's going to make me so nervous. It's gonna make me so worried about that dog, feel pain for their family. It's gonna make me worry about my dogs. It's going to throw me out of my rhythm. It's going to throw me out of my positive energy. I'm not starting my day like that. This is also a passive activity and it distracts you from productivity. We don't, no, no, no distractions, guys. Go back to your morning routine we wrote at the top of the page and add no phones. Write it down, no phones. From what time to what time? I suggest initiating this before bed. So for example, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., you will not catch me scrolling through social media after 8 p.m. or before 8 a.m. Step five, choose one to two feel-good activities that bring you peace and joy and start your day with positivity. This is how you set your tone for the day. We want all the good vibes, all the good energy. Maybe you wake up and do a little meditation, take a walk around the block, or read a book. Whatever it is, I want you to feel good while doing it. Maybe you wake up a little cranky. That's okay. But just know that you can choose again. Choose again. It's that simple. I like to use this method, not just when it comes to how I wake up in the morning, but how anything, let's say I'm driving and somebody honks at me or they cut me off instead of freaking out and going full angry on them, which sometimes I may do. I'm human and I'm a woman. Like, what do you expect? I choose again. I think, okay, maybe they're having a bad day. I'm going to give them grace. I really try hard to do that. So if I if I get into something that maybe I'm a little bit crankier about, or maybe the day's not going as well as I planned, I give myself a moment to be, feel those feelings. You know, my feelings are valid. 
And then I choose again. I say, fuck that. I'm not going to be a cranky bitch right now. Nobody, nobody wants to hang out with me when I'm a cranky bitch. I don't want to hang around with myself when I'm a cranky bitch. <laughs> so choosing to go into your morning activities with a positive intent is so important. Ask yourself, how do you want to feel after? Maybe how do you want to feel during? Remind yourself that you get to meditate. You get to walk. You get to cook yourself a warm meal. Some ideas. Meditate. It doesn't have to be long, anywhere from five to 20 minutes. Breath work. I personally love breath work. Not sure if you're not sure how to meditate or do breathing exercises, go on YouTube and search five minute breath work, five minute meditation, five minute morning meditation. Morning meditations will normally include like um, some kind of affirmation. So some kind of guided meditation. You could stretch. You could do positive affirmations. I do guided affirmations every morning. You can, again, YouTube morning affirmations. We want to start our day with all the gratitude. Go for a walk in nature or just on your treadmill. Journal. Read. Any kind of healing therapies, red light, massage gun, heating pad, cold shower, face ice bath, electric sim, whatever makes you feel good. I just really suggest avoiding screens, avoiding your phone. Now we're going to pause again and write down a few of these activities that you want to try. And you can cycle through different ones each morning. Some mornings I like to meditate while I do my red light therapy. Some mornings I'll do breath work while I do red light. Some mornings I'll just do breath work. Some mornings I will just do my positive affirmations while I'm sitting there, or I will do it while I'm cooking. I have it stack. Some mornings I do red light and I just hang out with my dogs. I just like to sit in quiet and be present. So after you write down these activities, just let's get an estimation of how long they're going to take you. Are you meditating for five minutes, then journaling for five? Again, maybe you want to habit stack and stretch while you listen to positive affirmations. I suggest dedicating your first 30 minutes to this routine. And if you don't have 30 minutes, we'll determine that a little bit. We can get your exact time down at the end. But if you don't have that 30 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just even give yourself five minutes in the morning. Okay, step six, water. Reminds me, water break. The first thing in your body every day needs to be water, not coffee. Coffee is after breakfast, not during, after. If you feel bloated on the reg, I can almost guarantee that you're not getting enough water in. Uh, it's essential to help your body digest the food we eat, absorb nutrients, and rid waste. So if you struggle with it, keep one by your bedside and start drinking as soon as you sit up. Just a couple sips, maybe like start off with eight ounces and then drink throughout your morning routine. My goal is to get 30 ounces before breakfast, but I will not drink until after I brush my teeth because I don't want to, I don't want to drink my sleepy breath. Sip on some water while you do all those activities we listed above. Okay, now I want you to write down your water goal for the day and make sure it's a minimum 100 ounces. The next two steps are interchangeable. I would put whichever one you struggle with the most first, and everything is interchangeable. If you want to make breakfast first, which is going to be the next step, and then do your feel-good activities, you can. Or if you want to get ready for the day first, make breakfast, then do feel-good activities before you leave. You can, but I want you to prioritize what makes you feel best. So step seven, make a healthy breakfast. If you're the person who runs out the door not thinking of food and rushing to go get coffee, you are now the person who wakes up early and cooks breakfast at home. Welcome to the club. If you don't want to spend time cooking, meal prep. Make overnight oats the night before. Put your, put your smoothie in the blender and add milk in the morning. Meal prep egg bites or take five minutes to put eggs and toast on the stove. Now let's be clear on what a healthy breakfast is. I don't want you loading up on sugar first thing in the morning. Similar to this whole routine we're creating to set the tone for the day positively, let's set the tone of how you fuel yourself for the day. Base your diet around whole foods in their natural state and minimize anything processed. There's a really big emphasis, and maybe I should just do a whole um, episode on this, on the mind-gut connection. I've said this before, but you guys know, you ever get really anxious, and then you instantly get a stomach ache, like you have to go to the bathroom, okay? It works the other way, too. Do you ever eat something, and then you get a headache? Your mind and gut work very closely together. There are 
hundreds and thousands of neurons firing at each other at all time, giving signals. The food that we put in our body affects our mind. So let's make a balanced breakfast filled with protein, fats, carbs, and fiber. Protein and fiber are the biggest emphasis. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You don't just hear like doctors and like fitness professionals saying that for our health. Throughout the night, you're fasting. Breakfast is when you literally break the fast and turn on your metabolism, flips that switch, gets your metabolism going. And a lot of people associate metabolism with burning fat. They say, oh, I have a slow metabolism. That's not, that's not the metabolism's job. Yes, it's one of them, but the metabolism's main job is to keep you alive. How do we stay alive? Energy. It creates energy. One of the reasons why we stay alive, that is. So the real purpose is creating energy from food. It can't work to burn fat if it doesn't have any food to create into energy, to convert. Waiting to eat breakfast can slow down your metabolism. So next we're going to write down your plan for breakfast. How long will it take you to make and how long if will it take you to eat? I'd say 20 to 30 minutes if you're cooking, 10 to 15 minutes if you're meal prepped. Step eight, make yourself presentable. Let's be clear. We don't get ourselves dolled up to look good for others. We do it to feel good about ourselves. Even if you work from home, wash your face, get dressed, do your hair, put on some, some mascara, not because you're not beautiful in your oversized t-shirt and messy bun, because darling, you're gorgeous but because I know you'll feel better when you're put together. Give yourself 30 minutes at least to do this. I don't know about you guys, I need at least 40 minutes if I'm leaving my house. You can cut this time down by getting prepared the night before. I suggest laying out your clothes, packing a gym bag if you need one for after work, washing your hair, blowing it out, maybe even putting your hair into some kind of overnight curls. Now, we're going to write down exactly what you need to do to get ready and how much time you'll need. Don't forget shower, washing your face, contacts. If you want time to go to the bathroom, whatever it may be, write down those details. Let's be very clear. We can't succeed if we're not clear. Okay, so now we have our baseline. Step nine, tie it all together. We're working backwards again. We're coming full circle here. Now that you have all of your morning routine written out, to make your timeline. One, write down what time you need to be at work. Now, write down what time you need to leave the house to be at work on the next line underneath. We're going line by line by line here. Write what time you want to be ready to leave the house, which should be 10, 10 to 15 minutes before you leave. Remember, we're early girlies, right? This is this is for when if you want to check some some messages on your phone. If you want to make your coffee before leaving after you ate breakfast. If you want to hang out with your partner if you need time with your kids, whatever it is, 15 minutes to kind of tie everything together. Next, write down what time you need to start getting ready by. If you need 60 minutes, that time is 60 minutes before you need to leave. Write down what time you need to make and eat breakfast. Write down what time you need to start your morning feel-good activities. And now write down what time you need to wake up, which should only be a few minutes before those feel-good activities. And you, you kind of have a general idea of how long you're taking because we went over this before. Now, this is the fun part. This is the part that a lot of people don't like to stick to. So maybe it's not the fun part. Now calculate eight hours before that because that is when you should be asleep by. So asleep, asleep by. So if you wake up at 7 a.m., eight hours before is asleep by 11 p.m. If you're up at 6 a.m., you're asleep by 10 p.m. Up at 5 a.m., asleep by 9 p.m. Now, if you need to be asleep by 10 p.m., you should be in bed 30 to 60 minutes before with no phone and no TV. You can listen to music, audiobooks, podcasts, or read a book, or even do some other feel-good activities. You can draw, coloring book, but you should be doing something to unwind and relax. So write down what time you need to be in bed by. If you need to meal prep breakfast or lunch or lay out the clothes the night before, write it all down. Now you can take this a step further on your own 
and work backwards, planning your entire day and planning your evening routine. I think an evening routine is almost just as important as a morning routine because you're not going to have this successful morning routine if you're not in bed on time. So for example, if you want to go to the gym after work, you get off of work at 5 p.m. and you need to be asleep at 10 p.m. You go straight to the gym from work, 5.30 to 6.30, you're there. You're home by 7. You eat dinner by 7.30. You relax, chill from 8 to 9 or do whatever else you need to do, laundry, clean, family time, etc. You can even swap that gym time out for chore time on other days. So Monday, you gym, Tuesday, you clean and do laundry, Wednesday, you gym, Thursday, you relax, or maybe even Monday, you meal prep from 5.30 when you get home from work to 7. You eat dinner at 7, you unwind from 7.30 to 8.30, you do what you need to do, 8.30 to 9, you're in by, by 9, asleep by 10. So this is kind of the vibe that we're going for here, the outline rather. Listen, I know this seems like a lot, and I know you've got other things going on. Maybe your commute to work is an hour. <laughs> Roxy, that girl. Maybe you only have 30 minutes, two times a week to work out. Make it into fit into your schedule, your routine. But this morning routine is so important. If you want to get anywhere in life, you need to be extremely clear on exactly how you're going to do it. So building a step-by-step, hour-by-hour routine will hold you accountable. Clarity. Clarity and consistency. Now, what if you have tried multiple times to get into a morning routine and you just can't seem to stick to it? This routine we just created is going to be your end goal, but we need to work up to it just kind of like a health and fitness goal. We want to start with sleep before we start with nutrition, before we start with fitness. So I want you to focus on one healthy habit at a time. If you are currently struggling with eating breakfast, I want you to remove the feel-good activity for now, eat breakfast consistently for two weeks, and then add in one feel-good activity and get up 15 minutes earlier. So you wake up, take five, 10 minutes in bed, even maybe sitting in bed, you do some breath work, you do some positive affirmations, or while you're getting ready for the day, you're doing your positive affirmations. Little, Little changes like that go a really long way. Maybe you go on your phone right away in the morning. Start with no phones. Okay, so now what about the weekends? I'm going to encourage you to do the same morning routine. I know it's hard. Maybe the time changes a bit or you do your meditations with your partner or maybe even your kids or you're listening to your affirmations while you're cooking the family breakfast. But do one thing every morning that brings you genuine joy. I suggest staying off of your phone and limiting television, even so anything for the first hour you wake up. And now if you want to take this a step further into your nighttime routine, think of your unwinding, your more relaxing activities. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing things like exercise within the, the the last two hours before bed or anything that is going to increase energy. If you guys really want more, I can do an entire nighttime routine episode. But I think this morning routine, this steps into a morning routine is really going to help you feel amazing. I do it. It makes me feel amazing. I encourage my clients to do it. And we're just laying it out. And now again, taking it a step further, write out the rest of your routines and activities, everything you need to get done on a day and a week. And you can make specific Monday routines or your Monday schedule, your Wednesday schedule, your weekend schedule. Get really clear on what you want. Hold yourself accountable. Show the fuck up and be the person you already know you are. I know she's in there. She, he, whoever is listening. Thank you so much for listening. If you learned something from this episode, please share it with a friend, post it to your Instagram story and tag me and get excited. I have so many special guests I'm going to be bringing on this podcast. I am really trying to make a little bit of a pivot here and focus on overall wellness. We're going to be covering a lot more on the Diet Starts Never podcast. And I am so excited to bring you guys along for the ride. Have such an amazing day and I will talk to you soon.